Okay, the tech job market is basically a dumpster fire right now. And I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys about trying to start your career in cybersecurity and not getting any luck hearing back from recruiters, getting interviews, or just making yourself stand out as a job candidate. So in this video, I'll be sharing how to three extra chances to get hired as a cybersecurity analyst. Thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. And first, I do want to share my overall thoughts about the cybersecurity job market specifically. Okay, where do I even begin? Firstly, entry-level jobs in cybersecurity are broken. Firstly, there's been a shift away from hiring entry-level talent, especially in cybersecurity. I won't go too into detail about this because I have also made a video on the overall cybersecurity job market and entry-level jobs in a previous video, but there are three things to note here. Number one is the number of tech workers in general that have gotten laid off and impacted by recent tech layoffs and even tech layoffs in the last two, three years. Yes, tech layoffs didn't impact cybersecurity as much as it did software engineering, data analytics, even HR. But what happens when a software engineer who got laid off a few months ago is still unable to find a job? Well, one of their potential paths is to upscale or get a different skill set and basically transition into cybersecurity or another adjacent field in tech. This is something that I've seen a lot of, especially as someone who is now chronically on LinkedIn in. A lot of people are switching into cybersecurity because even in the tech space, cybersecurity is known to have relatively good job security and pretty decent pay, especially coming off of tech layoffs where cybersecurity is definitely one of the areas in tech that were the least impacted. And of course, for good reason, because imagine a big bank making a headline that they laid off a thousand cybersecurity employees. That's basically just making yourself a target for attack. Number two is the number of tech recruiters that were laid off. This means there may not be a person always there to vet the candidate prerequisites or requirements that hiring managers are looking for. And sure, it may be awesome to have someone who has five to seven years of experience, a CISSP, worked on red team, blue team, and GRC for a job listing that realistically may only need about two years of experience. But a hiring manager is hiring specifically for their team. They're going to ask their direct reports, hey, what would you want in a candidate? And they're most likely going to share a huge laundry list of potential skills, accreditations, certifications, years of experience requirements. And the tech recruiter or HR is typically the one going, hey, this is unrealistic for a job that requires two years of experience. But with so many tech recruiters and HR being impacted by the tech layoffs, there just may not always be that middle person to give that advice and feedback to the hiring manager, which is also contributing to the fact that there are so many inflated job listings for jobs that only require one to two years of experience. And finally, number three, is the fact that companies are prioritizing hiring for more mid-level and senior level roles. Part of this may also be because cyber attacks, DDoS attacks, ransomware attacks, activity from nation states, etc., are basically at an all-time high. I mean, every year they basically hit a new all-time high. And because of this, a lot of companies are putting their eggs into the basket of experienced level candidates, which may make sense in the short term. But personally, I think if you're not letting in new entry-level talent into the workforce, that means you're also not getting new perspectives, new ideas, new potential skill sets that early career candidates may bring compared to someone who has five, 10 years of experience that may be relying on past experience to succeed in their jobs, while someone who is brand new to the field may be a lot more willing to learn new skills or pick up on the things that someone experienced wouldn't have. All right, so with that, I'm done bashing on companies and their hiring practices, but of course, it's not just on the company side. As a job candidate, you also want to put your best foot forward, and I want to give you guys specific steps to take to help you stand out to recruiters, to hiring managers, especially in this very competitive job market. The first thing I want you to do is to find someone who's actually working in cybersecurity or has experience to review your resume and provide you feedback. Have someone with previous background in data analytics, software engineering, and also many different areas in cybersecurity. I've had so many people look through my resume and give me different feedback, but the feedback that I value the most is from the people who are actually in the jobs that I would want to work in. And if you don't already know someone who is working in cybersecurity, I'd recommend finding a security analyst on Fiverr to help review your resume. And I highly recommend it, especially if you've only used the generic resume reviewers online. They typically don't have the insight of someone who is actually working in cybersecurity and those are skills or the specific things that hiring managers and recruiters are looking for when they're vetting their candidates. Plus, many of them also help your resume become ATS compliant. This is basically when you submit your resume for a job, there's going to be some automation or some kind of vetting process that a computer will do before it sends over a short list of candidates to the hiring manager or the recruiter to look at. Your goal is to get past these ATS systems and get your resume in front of a real person. And one of the best ways to do that is getting someone who has been in the field to look at your resume and give you actionable feedback that you can use to help your yourself stand out, whether it be to learn specific skills for the cybersecurity job that you're interested in, any feedback on formatting or how your resume is laid out, as well as just whether or not they think that you would be a good candidate for a cybersecurity role based on your resume. And if not, that typically means two things. Number one, you likely don't have an accredited entry-level cybersecurity certification. The one I always recommend starting with is the CompTIA Security Plus. Or number two, you don't have enough technical cybersecurity projects to actually showcase your hands-on experience and 
skill set using cybersecurity tools. And most cybersecurity tools also have an open source version or a free version or a community license that you can use for free. So please don't let anyone convince you that you can't get cybersecurity experience without working in a cybersecurity job because there's so many projects that you can do. There's free CTFs or capture the flags. You can get involved in B-sides. You can create your own blog for cybersecurity walkthroughs. You can make an SOC home lab. You can create your own SIEM using open source tools. There's so much you can do. And if you do go for the Security Plus certification, please don't just stop there. I get a lot of comments where someone shares their job search experience and they basically say that they're not qualified for any of the entry level cybersecurity jobs, but many of the skills listed on job listings can actually be learned on your own and put into practice on personal projects. Please don't overlook the significance of having really strong technical projects on your resume even if you don't have any cybersecurity experience yet. I'm not saying that projects replace real world experience, but it definitely can make a difference between a recruiter taking that chance and giving you a call anyway. Now I did recently use Fiverr to have someone look at my resume and specifically a security analyst because they're just going to have much better actionable feedback compared to someone who isn't in cybersecurity or any random automated resume reviewer that you find online. And as you guys may or may not know, I actually did start applying to cybersecurity jobs, but these specific jobs that I'm applying for are pretty niche since I do want to utilize my blue team skills as well as GRC skills. And that's definitely not an overlap that you see in every cybersecurity role. I'll link the Fiverr service I use for my resume review linked in my description and you can use my code with sandra to get 10 percent off your order on fiber for anyone else who may be looking for constructive feedback on your specific resume as part of my resume review sam basically helped me rewrite my resume so that it really showcased not just the work that i did but also the impact of the work that i did rather than just listing my experience in bulleted form and he focuses specifically on it engineering and tech resumes and cvs that are ats optimized and of course show the right industry keywords to help you stand out to hiring managers and recruiters all right my next piece of advice is to find a cybersecurity mentor. This is one of the reasons why I always recommend going to in-person events, cybersecurity conferences, b-sides, even making connections on cybersecurity discord channels and LinkedIn. In this day and age, networking and connecting with those who are working in cybersecurity is going to be so much more valuable to you than cold applying to jobs online. I know people who've submitted hundreds and thousands of job applications and hear back nothing, but I also know people who have applied to just a select few number of cybersecurity jobs. Reach out to the hiring manager on LinkedIn, thank them for posting the job and for their consideration, letting them know that they applied and that was how they were able to stand out and get the job. And if you don't have a cybersecurity mentor, the next best thing is to get a cybersecurity career coach. This is a service that is also provided on Fiverr and I've actually gone through two cybersecurity coaching sessions using Fiverr, so I do highly recommend it. Career coaching is basically having someone going through your entire career roadmap, your experience, what you're looking for in a career, and they also provide an actionable plan for you to move forward with to help you take the steps in the right direction for the skills you need to learn, the certifications you need to get, and of course just very specific advice for you in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So I recently got career coaching from Daniel, who's worked in cybersecurity as a cybersecurity engineer and consultant for nearly 10 years. So they are essentially where I would want to be in four to five years in my career in cybersecurity. And I basically asked him advice for getting back into the job market, what cybersecurity skills that he's seen hiring managers really hiring for, or specifically any gaps in the market, or maybe there aren't as many job candidates with XYZ skill set, but they really want that skill set in the cybersecurity roles that they're trying to fill. These are the key insights that you can't get without talking to someone who is actually working in the field. So as part of the career coaching that he provides. This is a one hour session and it's great for anyone who isn't technical and trying to get into cybersecurity, someone who may already be in cybersecurity but are looking to grow in their career, whether it be through promotions or trying to move into a different niche in cybersecurity. And of course, those who are looking for advice on what training to take. Personally, I got a lot of actionable feedback on what I could personally do better to stand out as a cybersecurity candidate, especially as someone who has a gap in their resume and looking for specific advice catered to my personal situation. And of course, I'll also include Daniel's career coaching on Fiverr linked in my description. All right, last but not least is to make sure that the way that you're applying to cybersecurity jobs is actually getting you results. My first rule of thumb is to avoid the easy applies, the one-click applies, anything that's really easy to apply to that you can just click a button and you applied, you're likely not going to hear back because thousands of people will probably apply to that same job and they're getting thousands of resumes. So I typically stay away from those because I rarely hear back from those. And I'm not saying that you should never apply. If there's a job listing with a easy apply and a normal apply button, try to go for the normal apply route or specifically as part of your job search strategy, don't just apply to the easy applies. Make sure that at least half of the job applications that you're sending out are not easy apply. So if you send one easy apply, then make sure you send another normal apply or to a job listing that doesn't have an easy apply option and you have a much better chance of standing out as a job candidate. And the second thing is to be picky about the job sites that you use. I share a list of my favorite job 
job portals and job application sites in my free cybersecurity career guide, also linked in my description. But try to stay away from the oversaturated sites, the sites that are just very, very large or very popular. The ones that I recommend that is very popular, the ISO use is LinkedIn jobs because there are just a lot of job options on there. But there are lots of other job sites that you can use that aren't the popular mainstream ones. In fact, even better if you find job portals that are specifically catered towards tech jobs. Now, another option I'd recommend is using a Fiverr service to help you apply to cybersecurity jobs. There are services on Fiverr that'll basically scrape the web and find cybersecurity jobs that are relevant to your resume and specific keywords that you use and help you apply for them directly. This is a great way to expand your job search outside of the typical job postings that you would apply for because you're looking on different job boards that aren't just the most popular ones. Now, I did recently test this out for those of you who may also be considering this, and I use this Fiverr service from Usman, basically using my resume and looking for jobs that match my experience and my skill set. And this also did include a brief resume review as well. And as part of the service, you'll also get an Excel spreadsheet of the work status that he did, including the job listings that he helped you apply for, the job title, the company, and any other relevant information. I'll also share my experience on what jobs I heard back from, any job leads or recruiter reach outs from these job applications that were sent out as well. And of course, I'll have this Fiverr service linked in my description for anyone who may also be interested. But one last thing before we close out, before you do anything else, look up the specific job title that you're interested in and find the top three most common overlapping skills and try to find a way to incorporate those into your personal projects and technical experience. I think just this piece of advice is going to be really helpful in not only helping you grow your foundations and gaining a technical skill set, but also in having something to talk about when you talk to recruiters and hiring managers about your experience and basically proving to them that you have what it takes to learn the skills and do the job. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Fiverr services I mentioned in this video to help give you customized advice that is relevant to your specific situation. You can also use my code with Sandra to get 10% off your order on Fiverr. Also, don't forget to join our Discord channel where we chat about all things cybersecurity, careers, certifications, GRC, etc. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.